Okay, so this is Stanley. This car was the uh, was a DARPA challenge in 2005, which was totally under autonomous control. And it raced through the desert, and it totally hand, won hands down. And the Stanford University created this car, and they affectionately called it Stanley. So then this whole control system, or part of this control system, is called the Stanley Control Method. So what this is, is it's very different than Pure Pursuit. Pure Pursuit, we were basing it off of the, the pivot axle, and then coming across, finding out what the point on our path was, and then determined an arc to get to that point. The trouble with that is it's always working way behind. The Stanley method uses the front steering axle, determines the closest point on the path to that, and then it steers towards that path. Now, we all know that just steering towards the path doesn't work because you're going to drive right across it and then back and forth. But what the, uh, the Stanley method, using the, uh, the kinematic equations of a vehicle... It, uh, where is it here? Quite simply, and of course it's not simply, it's two parts. And these are just safeties, but you have the heading of the path and the heading of the steering angle. And when you subtract those, that becomes your error signal. So what this part of the equation does is it lines up the vehicle with the heading of the path. So that's what that does. Now, in nonlinear steering, what we need to do is use then arc tangent to take the error of the cross track error, or how far we are away from the line, divided by the speed, plus some sort of uh, control for when it's going really slow. Uh, you don't want to, when the velocity is zero, of course, then this number becomes huge and the angle becomes huge and it becomes very unstable. So you need some sort of a um, a limit to what you're dividing by. You can also limit the yaw rate of the vehicle, your, your trajectory and your measured, and the steering angle max and min of what you want to steer without steering too far, too fast, and slowing that down. And this is at time stepping to I, meaning which is now, and we can look to the future and then do a feed forward type of, of computation as well. So although it looks simple, it can get fairly involved, but it in the end, it actually is quite simple. So what does all this mean? So here we have the uh, Stanley method, finally got it working. It's complicated because the original Stanley method was designed to only work in one direction. And our AB line goes in two directions, we can go either side of the, of the line. So the advantage of the Stanley method is even if you were going the wrong way, it would turn the vehicle around and head the proper way down the path, which is really kind of cool for some of our other um, paths like the recorded path or the self-driving path or U-turns and that sort of thing. We always want to drive the same way. So that I think has some huge potential for the future there. But it seems to be working pretty good. I still have the old... Uh, pure pursuit line here. And you see the front end. It works pretty good. It comes right back onto the line. And it's based on the front end of the vehicle. Uh, and what's steering. And then lining that up. So you can see that it constantly keeps that steering angle on that line. So it keeps the front end on the line. The neat thing is there is no longer a look ahead point. So if we get off the line, you notice it takes, no matter how fast you're going, it will get back to the line in the same amount of time. So that works really, really well. Let's slow back down again. We'll do, try to do it slow. Whoops, that's too slow. Come off the line. You know, it can just turn faster. So I have the look ahead set up for the gain of the the nonlinear portion of it, not the uh, not the heading part of it. I have that set as our k value for gain. So if we turn this way down, 
like say 0.5, you can see it'll take longer to get there. So we can control how quickly and or how slowly or how aggressively when we want to get back to line. We can crank it right up to be completely unstable. And now we'll have a gain of greater than one and we'll cross the line. Not what you want. So we can set it between anywhere in between the two being taking too long and oscillation. So that's a good thing. So once again, it becomes just a single point of uh, um, a single point control, just like pure pursuit. So if we limit the amount of steer angle, so right now it's 30 degrees, we turn that down, you know, it won't turn as sharp. So between limiting the steering angle Yeah, it's just way too high. So it's obvious. So it's good. So we put it at unity. And we can have a very controlled return back to the line. You don't have to try this on the real tractor and make sure it works. But basically, it's very much the same computations as the old AB line stuff. We, uh, you find out how far you are away from the line and use that for display purpose and do the pure pursuit calculations. And at the same time, we can also do the Stanley calculations where we pick our point based on our steering axle, how far we are away from the line. And then calculate that point, put that point on the line, find out how far we are away from the line, uh, determine our heading based on the AB line and what the difference is between our steering angle and the AB line, or our, our heading of our vehicle in the AB line. Now we have to determine which way we're going. Are we going the right way? Are we going backwards to the way the line was created? And set the steer points accordingly. And then it gets into that stupid circular area where 358 degrees and 2 degrees, you need a value that goes from minus 1 to minus 2, not 356 to 2. So a lot of this is just fixing up and converting that circular error problem with stupid circles and going from zero to 360 and back again. Of course, it does it all in radians, but it's just easier to explain in degrees. So then once we have our steer angle, this is that first term, first uh, error term of heading. And then we take our error term of our distance away, because we calculated the distance from the point on the line to the distance to the center of the vehicle and then divide that by the speed to keep that constant. And we convert that to degrees. And voila, we have our Stanley method steering angle that we send off to the Arduino. And then that becomes our steering. So uh, I hope this makes sense. Um, ask any questions if you want, but uh, it's, it's a very interesting concept and I'm looking forward to trying it out in the tractor. Anyway, thanks.